The last part of section 1.1 deals with set notation. Set notation is the way to write numbers using mathematical symbols in a set. Now there are two types of sets. One is called a finite set, which basically is a set of numbers of any type where you can count how many numbers are in the set. Now my little brackets indicate set notation here, and I have four numbers in this set. I've got the number 1, 3, 4, and 7. This is an example of a finite set because there are four numbers in that set. An infinite set, you can't count how many numbers are in it. And usually it involves inequality signs. For example, the inequality x is greater than 1. That is an example of an infinite set of numbers because you cannot tell me how many numbers are greater than 1. For instance, there's 1.1, 1 1.3, 5.782, 1,000, 1 million. You cannot tell me how many numbers are in that set. That's why it's called infinite with the IN in the front. Now, finite sets are almost always represented in what is called roster notation. What I have written there is ac actually an example of something in roster notation. An infinite set is usually written in what is called interval notation, which is something that we'll talk about here in just a second. Interval notation usually involves brackets and parentheses. Brackets means that the number is included, and parentheses indicates that the number is not included, which we will talk about here as we do a couple of examples. On your note notebook sheet, the notes that uh, you had to fill out, I believe you have problem number 13, which says complete the table by showing the correct notation for each example. We're going to do these three examples right here that I'm putting the stars by together. First of all, it says our set of numbers in the first problem is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. You can count how many numbers are in it. Therefore, it is finite. Finite sets use roster notation. And if I'm going to put those numbers in roster notation, very simply, I put brackets, and I list the numbers with commas separating all of them. I have just listed that set of numbers in roster notation. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Interval notation is used for infinite sets. Therefore, you cannot write this particular set of numbers in interval notation. Set builder notation. Set builder notation uses uh, inequality signs and our number system letters that you learned from example number one. So if I was going to write this in set builder notation, what I would write is I would say that the lowest number is one and the highest number is 5. So I would write it as I just did. 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 5. However, that is an interval. That includes also all the decimals. So we have to list a restriction as part of that to make sure that decimals are not included. And that is where I would write x has to be an element of the natural number system. That guarantees that I do not have decimals. And that is how I would write my first example in set builder notation. Let's move on to example two. Negative two is less than or equal to n, which is less than or equal to two. 
since I have inequality symbols in that problem, this cannot be listed in roster notation. This one cannot be done because it is an infinite set because it has all the inequality signs in it. Interval notation. The way to do this in interval notation is very simple. You take a look at the first number, which is negative 2, and you write it down. And then you look at the inequality symbol. Since there's an equal sign in there, it's less than or equal to, you put a bracket or a brace on that side of the negative 2. That shows that that number is included in the set. Comma. And then you look at the last number, which is 2. So I'm going to put the 2 there. And then I look at the symbol right before it. And I see that also has an equal sign in it. So therefore, I use braces to indicate interval notation. Negative 2, comma, 2 with the braces around it. Now I'm going to go down underneath just to show you. What if I have negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 2? The difference then would be in interval notation. This would be written with a, bra a brace, and then the negative 2, since that's the first number, comma, the last number's positive 2. However, since that symbol right there does not have an equal sign, then you would use a parenthesis at the end to indicate that the 2 is not included in that set. And there you go. That would be how you would write that in interval notation. All right, let's go finish the second example. Set builder notation. Set builder notation, you're pretty much already done with this because you have negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to positive 2, and x is an element of the real number system. And that is how you would write the set builder notation. So if you already have it written in interval form, that's pretty much how you do set builder notation. The last problem says all whole numbers less than 3. Well, if you recall from example 2's video, I'm sorry, example 1 video, whole numbers start with the number 0. So this set can actually be written in roster notation because you can actually list them. All whole numbers that are less than 3, 0, 1, and 2. That's it. It doesn't include decimals. Now since you wrote it in roster notation, you can't write it in interval notation. And then set builder notation would be very similar to our set builder notation in example number one. What I'm going to write is that my little curly brackets, and I'm going to write 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 2, and x has to be an element of the whole number system, and I'm done. And that is how you write numbers using set notation. Finally, graphing. I'm going to go back to example two, this one right here. If I'm going to write this as a graph or draw this as a graph, you would make a number line and you would put down the numbers at the beginning and the end. So I would write down negative two, negative one, zero, one, and 2, because that encompasses all our numbers in our set. Then I look at the symbols. Since I noticed next to the negative 2 was that greater or less than or equal to sign, since it's equal to, I'm going to put a, a dot at negative 2, and I'm going to fill it in, because it's equal to. I'm going to look at the last symbol which is less than or equal. And it's 2, so I'm going to put a filled in dot at 2 because of the equal sign. 
And since n, since our letter n is in between those two, then I just draw a squiggly line to connect those two dots, and that is the graphical representation of that particular set. Now the difference is at the very bottom, if I was to graph this one, the only difference would be since I notice that the last symbol is less than, then my last dot on the two would be an open dot. So therefore, my graph would look very similar. I'd go from negative two to positive two, and we'd still have a closed dot at negative two because of this equal sign, but because of that less, or that less than sign at the very end does not have an equals, it would be an open dot because of that symbol right there. And again, the squiggly line would go in between.